whiskey, Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm tasting um, Buskers again. I am not yet there for the triple cast. This is my my little shimmer of hope. Let's see if it works or not. Um, I did not really like the pot still. I'm so sorry, very young and not where it should be. I dislike the single malt even more. Um, unfortunately, very hot and absolutely not what I expect from a single malt from Ireland at this age, unfortunately. And now I have a single grain. Single grain is the unique part that they actually can do at the distillery because they can make actually under one roof in one room in their still room, they have um, pot stills where they can actually make the single malt and single pot still. You can make um, malted and unmalted barley and they actually have a column still in there where they can make single grain. So single grain in this case is actually made from corn predominantly. There's a little bit of malt in there for the enzymes, but this is predominantly corn. When I was there at the distillery, the Royal Oak Distillery um, two years ago, um, that was very, very interesting because they had their, um, you have your washbacks where you actually let the fermented wort basically um, use the, the yeast to turn it into alcohol. And before that, you have the so-called wash tongue. And in Ireland, um, sorry, in Scotland, you actually have a wash tongue where you put maybe five tons of um, material in there and you put water on top of it and you wash out the water and you take the sugars with you. You do it a second time, maybe 10 degrees higher in temperature. The first time, 60, maybe the second time, 80. And the last time, maybe even 88 or 89, or even up to 90 degrees Celsius. And the third wash you use again for the first wash for the first mash tun. So you can actually do that much quicker than you can use it then with the fermenting time with the washbacks. Um, the mash tun takes maybe two to eight hours, depends on the distillery. And if you're going to ferment, it's going to take between 60 hours, maybe down to 52 and up to 180 I've seen recently. And so it's a much, much longer time. And so you need a lot of those washbacks for one mash ton. Now, in this case, the wire, they had a special mash ton just for their single grain. And it was actually, it looked a little bit like a UFO. It was all, um, it was like aluminum foil all over it. Underneath there was a type of um, insulation that kept all the heat because they were up to almost 90 degrees to break down the enzymes of the corn. The corn is not a very, very um, easy grain to work with. Barley is much easier. Rye is a little bit tricky. Wheat is even easier. Um, but corn is a little bit tough. Um, there's tough, long um, molecules in there and you need a lot of heat to break them down so that you can actually use the sugars then for the um, fermentation time for the yeast to actually um, bite into it and use it. So what you do is you just shove in that, um, that whole process after you've cooked the corn, you've taken out of the sugars, you've used the yeast to turn it into a um, alcohol and you throw it through this column still and this rectifying still where you have different plates in it and um, then you can actually go up to up above 90% um, alcohol pureness. 92, 94, up to theoretically 96.8%. And then you put the liquid back into the cask, you cut it down with water, maybe to 72%, maybe to 62%, whatever you need. And you put it in the cask and you just let it set. Now, um, it's very, very interesting that uh, Mr. Coffee um, was an Irish guy. The people in Ireland said, nah, we don't want that. We want real single pot still. We want really pot still whiskey. We don't want the cheap stuff. As we went to Scotland, the Scots were like, hey, this is a good idea. We can use 20% single malt and 80% grain, put it together, taste okay, cost half the price of the normal stuff. Let's do it. And that's what they did. There was a little bit of a, um, of a fight at the beginning. Is grain whiskey real whiskey or not? And then the Scottish Parliament decided, yes, it is, as well as the Irish Parliament said, why not? And, um, and um, therefore, Irish whiskey decided to add an E to differentiate themselves from the Scottish whiskey. So if you have a whiskey with an EY, you know that it's real whiskey. It's made in a pot still. And if you have a um, without the Y, it's probably going to be Scottish and it's probably going to be a grain um, combined with single malt to make a, 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 um, a blend whiskey. Now this, interesting enough, is an Irish whiskey with EY, even though it is a single grain. And there are some nice single grains out there. So um, this 
is whiskey base number 168139, 44.3%, 34 euros, 95, so 35 euros. And there's actually Sicilian Mazala casks used in here, which I don't pick up on the nose, <laughs> not really, and didn't pick up on the palate either in my first video in German. So I guess it must have just barely whiffed by those casks, who knows. On the side, it says one of three traditional, of our three traditional whiskeys, which I think is really weird because they have four bottles out. Um, and it's a beautiful, sweet finish that lasts. Now, I do admit that the finish is a little bit longer. It's a little bit more of a popcorn, a little bit like a George Dickel moment, if you're familiar with that. And they're using here 90, 90%, 95% corn and maybe 5 to 10% malted barley. I'd have to ask. Woody, if you ever watch this, could you tell me what the mash bill is of this? Thank you. He's the best tour guide of Ireland, in my personal opinion. And he works at the Royal Oak, and the guy's a genius. He's great. All right, uh, the Royal Distillery, Oak Distillery, has over 2 million liters of capacity due to the grain, and also with a single malt. Um, there's a lot that they can do there. Cheers. Mm. My mouth tells a story that I'm that my tongue does not like this. I have the, the the problem that I do not think I'm in whiskey territory. I'm in the German schnapps, the corn territory. I'm in the Danish or the Scandinavian aquavit. This is not whiskey whiskey as I expect. This is more of a cask matured corn type of whiskey. Almost like, it's almost like a light whiskey that's just too young. Yeah, exactly. If you go back to the um, MGP and the light whiskeys that they're bringing out at the moment, this actually tastes a little bit like a light whiskey that's just young. Um, it's going to be good in the future, I hope and I think, but at the moment it's just... So not doing it for me at all. Um, Let's tone it down a tiny little bit, bit. a couple drops. Um, what I do want to do is I want to do, I do want to compare. Um, I do have a, um, a single grain whiskey from Ireland and it's from Clonakilty. And so this is very, very interesting. This is a cask finished single grain. Um, this was one of 1,000 bottles that they originally put out and it's 43.6%. So what they do with their um, grain is they actually um, put it into some bourbon casks, not bourbon casks, Bordeaux casks. Here we should have some Sicilian Mazala casks. So you take a good young grain and you just actually add a little bit to it. And uh, with a finish. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to taste this first and then go back to our buskers. I like Kalana Kilti. I think Kalana Kilti is doing a great, great job. This is source whiskey, I must admit. They will not be able to produce um, grain whiskey themselves. They will be able to produce nice single malt and single pot still whiskey, but they'll have to continue to buy their grain. And um, yeah, over here, buskers actually produce their own grain. And I think that's actually something we should mention and something we should actually commemorate. Hmm. different. This is the grain I know and I like from Ireland. Mmm. Mmm. Um, I like a little bit of a, of a popcorn-y moment towards the end, but in general, a nice, nice grain. Over here, on the other hand, let's take a sip. Cleanse the palate. Mm. Mm. It's it's oilier, 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 but it's also more bitter. There's actually like a corn husk. 
I don't know if that's right or not, corn husk. There's a there's a vegetal note in there that is basically the opposite of a vanilla. It's not bitter, it's not a little, it's almost tart. It's very, very, um, it's like an unripe apple. It's like an unripe pear. Uh, yeah, that's about what it is, the unripe pear. Let's go there. Um, and it just turns me off. Sorry. Um, I'm going to still give this a, a C minus minus. The single pot still I gave a, a, a D and the um, single malt I gave a D minus. So this is so far the best stuff I've had, which is um, still a statement for itself. I have high hopes in the triple cask, the cheaper blended version that they make. I really hope that that is going to be something nice. Let's see and wait and what it is. Um, Clone Kilty, very much to um, recommend. It does cost about 10 euros more than this um, with the buskers, um, but they are producing it themselves and it's not sourced. All right, Whiskey Jason here. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe to others. And um, what is your favorite single grain? Mm, question of the day. Probably something from Ireland. And if you want to be very, very, very specific, everything according to the European laws that's made in America that's called bourbon would be over here a single grain. Bourbon is a national identity because it's made in America. It has the 51% um, corn. It's made, it's um, stored and matured in um, virgin oak. And so th that's the reason why we can call it bourbon. But if it was exactly the same recipe made over here in Europe, it would just be grain whiskey. Interesting enough. All right, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell others. Bye-bye.